Hello everybody, my name is the Xanthar Gamer, also known as Frank, and in the, this is, uh, welcome to, rather, episode 4 of the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, Spyro the Dragon 1. Uh, in the last episode I had killed this guy, hence that. Um, tried to record and ended up screwing up the recording, so these guys I've already killed. Uh, in the last episode my younger brother joined me for the, uh, playthrough. Uh, he's not here for this episode, but it, you know how kids can be sometimes. Wow, that's a lot more violent than I remember. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <coughs> in this episode, I'm going through Clifftown. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to complete at least a level every episode, um, at most two levels per episode, but you know how it can be sometimes. And I just remembered to start my timer, so this episode might be a little bit long. <clears throat> Halver? Halver. How's a dragon supposed to flame metal armor anyway? Remember Spyro, flame won't work on metal, but charge it with your horns? That should do the trick. Um... Egg Thief! Get back here, Egg Thief! Good. There we go. So, uh, in this episode, um, probably gonna go through this. Well, I mean, obviously I'm gonna go through this. Ah. Well, that's just not fair. Whatever. There we go. Sparks is back at full health. Um, I really do love the level design in this game. It, it's simple, but effective. Obviously, except for the uh, whole race against the timer levels, where you have to destroy a certain set of objects. But we're not going to do that one in this episode. So let's see here. These, uh, soup-making critters a lot uglier than they were in the, uh, PS1 version, I feel like. I don't know. Um... Do you guys feel like I go quiet too often. I feel like I really do. It's a problem that I am aware of. I just... I have a hard time thinking of stuff to say. Um... Take that. Uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna try to force myself to talk, you know, about random stuff that has nothing to really do with anything. I mean, a Let's Play doesn't necessarily have to be just talking all the time. Enzo! Hey, what's on the other side of that river? Why don't you glide there and find out? Hmm. Why did it do that? I really don't understand why it... See, okay, that's a problem I've noticed a lot in the uh, Reignited Trilogy is... There's a lot of areas where I would have very easily gotten over in the original version, 
that for whatever reason it just it, it registers me as having hit the edge even though I very clearly didn't and it's really weird I mean I guess as with any game you know there's going to be some issues with the uh, updated or upgraded or whatever you want to call it version every game has its issues but it's all something I noticed in the uh, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy too is that like whereas in the originals you would have very easily been able to get over certain like ledges or stuff like that it just kinda doesn't work for some reason in the new versions reach the highest point in Clifftown. You can get to almost anywhere from here. If I were you, I'd use that whirlwind over there. I think I'll take care of these vultures first. But, uh, I mean, it's a problem. Ugh, itchy nose. It's a problem that the game has, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. You know, like, it, it's, the game is still playable, it's still fun. It's just kind of annoying when you think, oh hey, I managed to get across this uh, ledge. And then, oh no, it's, you totally didn't. It's just kind of weird. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You would think that with as much polish as they put on the game, it wouldn't have weird issues like that, but like I said, every game has some kind of issue. Let's see, where to go from here? Um, also, I, I hope I hope you guys at home watching are having fun watching this. You know, I, I, I try my best to be entertaining and all that, but I, I'm just starting out, you know, so please forgive me at least a little bit for uh, any boring moments. What is that? Okay, that's just a random cloud in the sand. Weird. I've always wondered, like, ooh, actually, what's that over there? Is that just a cloud formation? Yeah. Anyways, I've always wondered, like, or thought how amazing it would be to be able to, like, hop into these games and just go around and explore. How did I miss this gemstone over here? But just be able to go around and explore and go beyond the edges of the different worlds, you know? I've always theorized that, like, these characters that live in these different worlds, you know, they, they obviously... I'm missing something here. They obviously, like, don't just live in these little areas. You know, there's obviously way more to it than that. And I've always thought how awesome it would be to be able to explore the full expanse. Like, it would be so cool to be able to just wander in any direction in one of these worlds. There we go. <clears throat> what else have I... Oh, I'm not gonna make it, am I? did. Okay, I'm actually kind of surprised at that. Alright, so I'm going to go up here. Hmm. 
Hmm? Oh. There they are. There we go. I also liked how, uh, depending on how many fodder enemies you've killed, it, it will sometimes give you a uh, extra life butterfly. I always thought that was actually kind of cool on the part of the developers. Like, if you're really low on lives or you're having a tough time, just kill, go around the area, kill fodder enemies, and you know you can kind of farm lives. It takes a little while. You know, it, much like any kind of farming that you have to do. But, I mean, be it real farming or farming for experience. But it's just, it's cool of the developers and the original and in this to, you know, put something like that in. I'm really glad that they made it where Sparks can, well, I mean, can't now because I've completed this level but he can actually point you to any gems that you might be missing and stuff like that. Because in the original game, I actually never managed to complete Spyro 1 until I was in my 20s uh, for the PS1. I never completed it until I was in my 20s because I didn't know that... Okay, so there's going to be a uh, level... I think it was in this one, uh, where you're expo going around a castle of some kind, and you have to actually um, jump a ramp. There's a supercharge uh, route, and you have to actually jump a ramp and go around the side of the castle. I had no idea that that was a thing until years later when I was trying to 100% the game on the PS1 and uh, found out that and there was in fact an extra little area that I just never knew was there because there's no indication that it's there. Um, and it's actually a bit of a failure on the part of the, the developers for the original game, or designers, Wait rather. Wait until you grow big, <clears throat> like me, before charging those large enemies. But it, it's kind of a failing on the part of the level designers, rather, uh, that in that particular level there is zero indication whatsoever that you're supposed to go on a ramp or go off the side of the ramp because it doesn't it doesn't seem like the kind of area that you're supposed to the way it the way it's designed it's not at all hinted at that you can go up there that way and yeah I mean I guess that's the whole point of a action adventure game is the adventure Todor oh Todor Spyro, some big norks up ahead are wearing armor, and in the ice cave, armor can make their feet very slippery. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to be completely honest. When I was a kid, I had no idea what that was supposed to mean. Like, I did not know that was him hinting to me that I'm supposed to, like, ram into them. So, as a kid, I was just like, what the heck am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get through this part? <laughs> eh. Wasn't, uh, wasn't the smartest kid, admittedly. Armor can make their feet slippery. Andor. Andor what? Thank you for releasing me. Oh, it's... Oops. Yeah, I would have loved it if uh, the developers for this had left in some of the... I uh, can't remember if this one had cheat codes in the original PS1 version. But there were, like, codes where you could change Spyro's uh, scale color, make him red or completely black or stuff like that. 
Um, or you could make him like flat as a board. Oh, what the hell? Oh, okay. I get. I. There we go. I like how that bat saw me flame its buddy and decided, you know what? That's something I want to get in on. Ah, there we go. Um, now, I should let you guys know that if it ever seems like I run past something that's fairly obvious, I have this weird... It's really weird. I don't know exactly what the name of it is, but I know that it's some kind... It's a form of colorblindness. Because if two shades of color are too similar to one another, like... I can't even think of a good example. Like, two shades of purple. You know, if they're way too similar to one another, I will not be able to tell the difference between the two. Like, I'll just see two purple things, you know? Um, actually, comment down below if you... I tried looking it up, and I could never find anything at all like that. I can't imagine I'm the only person with that kind of colorblindness. But, like... I, it, it, once I get up close to something, I can tell that they're slightly different. Like, depending on the shading and everything, I can tell when something isn't part of another thing. But when it comes to, like, just, yeah. And I wanted to be an artist when I was a kid. I used to wonder why it was weird. You know, I would use the uh, orange... Uh, and the only reason I knew it was the orange crayon was because it said orange, and yet it always looked yellow to me. Thanks for freeing me, Spyro. And now, where was I? I always felt kind of bad for that guy. Like, he, he, he very clearly is just going senile. But, uh, yeah, I've never, I've never quite figured out what kind of color blindness that is. I, I, like, uh, the best way I can describe it is I can see colors that are different. Like, I can tell the difference between that guy's silver armor and his green skin. But, like... And I can tell that there's some shade difference between the parts of the wall, but that's mostly because of the shapes. It's really weird. I mean, I know somebody in the comments is probably going to accuse me of just straight up lying, but hey, you know, believe what you will. You're going to regret that. Alright. Yay, extra life. Alright. Um, did I miss anything? No. Ragnar. Holy crap. You've done well, Spyro. Some dragons thought you weren't ready, but I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, all right. Uh, ready for what? Ready for your destiny, Spyro. Um, the reason I said holy crap when I saw Ragnar's name, when I was a uh, teenager, 
I used to play uh, D and D. I wasn't very good at it, admittedly, but I still played it. Um, and my character, I actually named Ragnar Frostax. He was a level something dwarf. Um, and the little the backstory I came up with him was that uh, his particular uh, village group pod. Uh, anyways, his particular uh, clan would have to earn their last names through some sort of amazing feat, which he earned when he pulled a uh, enchanted a uh, axe enchanted with the power to freeze his enemies on uh, hitting them with it. He pulled it out of the uh, stomach of a dragon of some kind. Uh, it, it, it was a real complicated backstory and I had spent ages making it up. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this off here. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe ring the notification bell so that uh, you'll get notified when I upload new videos. And leave a comment down below if you have any kind of advice on good ways of coming up with stuff to talk about during episodes or, you know, Ooh, or good recipes for cake. <laughs> that would actually be greatly appreciated. Uh, but anyways, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!